Hi guys, it's Stacy. I know it has been a very long time, but I can explain. I wanted to start a new series on my channel that is inspired by my love of art. I think I mentioned this in previous videos, but I was an art major in school and art has always inspired me ever since I was a kid. Whether it's painting, sculptures, photography, tapestries, basically anything you'd see in a museum or an artist book I've just I've loved since I was a kid. There have been a lot of new makeup out and it, it all looks nice but when you have a large collection like I do it's really hard to see something new or different that inspires you and I was just kind of I had lost that feeling. I, I just really wanted to sort of rediscover and utilize the products that I already own. It's not probably the best way to start a new channel but it is the most authentic way for me. And that's what I hope you get here, that you're getting you know, a real person and not someone saying you need to buy anything and everything, because I just don't believe that that's true. I mean, I love makeup, and yes, I like the, the nice stuff, the luxury stuff, but even I can feel like it's too much, you know? So with this series, what it is, is me being inspired by the artwork that I see. So, and it wouldn't just be makeup looks, but also including hair and the clothing that I wear. Now, with that said, I am not trying to exactly duplicate this work of art. I'm not trying to mean costume, okay? That is not what this is about. Um, I think that'd be fun, but what I'm trying to do is create a wearable look that's inspired by this art piece, utilizing the things I already have. So clothing that's already in my closet, makeup that I already own. This is the first video. I'm hoping to do one a week as my work schedule will allow. I hope that you enjoy it and that you're inspired too. Maybe there's products you kind of push to the side and maybe this will give you some inspiration for a future look for your own. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll stick around for the series. Please tell me what you think and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Welcome to the first video for Beauty in the Masterpiece. We're going to start right away with hair. Um, to recreate the hairstyle that's in the picture, I am using my Hot Tools flat iron. I purchased this on Amazon and I love this flat iron. It has the round barrel and it's just, which makes it easy to curl your hair quickly. And also it feels really good in the hand some styling tools are just kind of uncomfortable to hold but this one isn't um, the first curl didn't turn out that great but that's just because I didn't rotate my wrist enough but you'll see when I recurl it it comes out um, really nicely you get a nice bouncy curl I also really like this flat iron because it seems to curl my hair well without me using a ton of styling products. I don't like to use a lot of product in my hair. Um, styles don't last as long, but I don't care. I just don't like the feeling of that stuff in my hair. So I'm speeding up this section just so you can see and save a little bit of time on the video. I'm just curling the front. I'm curling the shorter pieces. Um, I had bangs and I'm growing out. And I'm just curling sort of that top part. The longer portion in the back, I'm just putting up in a bun for now. Um, once I'm done with the makeup, I'm just gonna put it in a messy kind of updo. So there was really no point in me curling my entire head. And uh, yeah, so that's how that looks. I'm just turning the flat iron off for now. I will get back to it later for touch-ups, but now we're going into makeup. For the foundation, I'm using the Very Valentino foundation. It is their long lasting makeup. I have it in the shade MA3. I When I purchased this it was um, in the winter time so the shade is a little bit light for me right now. I still have a tan. However, I 
figured it would be okay because I'm going to be going in with bronzer and some contour and you know a slightly darker powder and this foundation also does dry down a little bit deeper not a full shade more like half a shade but I think it works however it does have a really beautiful finish I I forgot how nice this looks on the skin next up is concealer and the concealer I'm using is the hourglass concealer I don't remember the shade off the top of my head I will list it below it's a really pretty concealer but um it's not my favorite I, I think it does a nice job in terms of coverage but if you have drier skin under the eye or any other part of your face you're using this be be careful it it can be a little unforgiving when it comes to texture um, so just make sure your skin and your under eyes are just really well prepped and in that case it would it would look nice um, then next up for eyeshadow I'm going in with one of the Huda Beauty Obsessions palette this is the Smoky Obsessions palette I love this palette it is so nice the shades are incredibly blendable and you can decide how big of an impact you want the um, eyeshadow to have so you can do like a light application or go in heavier like I am going to do I started off kind of how I would generally apply my makeup and then I as you'll see uh, throughout the video I just keep clumping up the intensity I keep building up the eyeshadow because in the photograph she had um, a pretty smoky eye so I'm just using kind of all the browns in the palette and I'm really trying to emphasize my crease I have slightly hooded eyes so I'm always trying to um, look like I have a little bit more lid space and really emphasizing the crease another thing that I really like about this palette is because the shadows are so blendable they're also pretty forgiving when it comes to your lids I don't notice them emphasizing texture or settling into fine lines and wrinkles even when I'm using them around the outer corner of my lid they just still look really really nice and they blend well and I've used these uh, shadows with natural hair brushes as well as synthetic brushes and they they work great they work really really well I'm looking at my phone right there so I could refer back to the picture and that's when I realized I needed to go in more uh, and build up the intensity with the shadow and that's when I decided to mix in the black with the darkest brown shadow at the bottom and really intensify the eye look I'm just going into the crease here and onto the um, blending it out to the outer corner and right here is when I was like oh I kind of scared myself with <laughs> how intense it was but again the shadows are so blendable that even if you pack on a little too much at the beginning you can still um, make it work for you and blend it out and also for the sake of time in the video what you see me doing on one side of my face the face that's closest to camera I do the exact same thing on the other side I'm using the same shades the same brushes everything I was just trying not to make this video three days long that's all now I'm going in with um, one of the two sort of shimmer shades and I found the best way to apply these is just with my finger I did not use a primer I just went in straight with the shadow really really beautiful this first um, shimmer shade is the more subtle of the two if you can even say that um, really really pretty I decided though to um, go in with the other one that's a little bit more intense and it has more of like a peachy like a peachy golden undertone to it really really pretty and just looks absolutely gorgeous on the eyes 
and um, the lighting that I have is natural light com um, combined with just one of my smaller square lights so the shades that you're seeing on camera I think are pretty true to what they look like in person now I'm going back in with that mid-tone, no, excuse me, the deeper brown, just to re-emphasize the outer corner, corner and the crease. Um, just because I think I lost some of it when I was packing on the shimmer shade. Now for the brows, I'm going in with this Tom Ford um, brow pencil. I think this is a nice brow pencil, however, it's overpriced. Um, this is the thin one. He has two versions of it. This is the skinnier pencil, and it's nice, but it's not any better than more affordable brow pencils. But if you get it on sale, I think it's a good one. Um, I really played up the brows here, made them thicker and darker than I normally would because that's the way they are in the picture. But um, it worked great with this eye look, and what a difference <laughs> from one side to the other. Next up is another Tom Ford product, and it is this is Intensity 2 in his um, Shade and Light palette. And the one hand is like a cream bronzer or contour, depending on the color you get, and then a highlight. Intensity 2 is, it works better for me like in the height of summer, but since there was so much shadow and dimension in the photograph, I decided to go with this one. Normally I use Intensity 1, but I thought Intensity 2 was more appropriate here. This is a beautiful formula. It, it kind of reminds me like Chanel has a cream bronzer, um, I think. Patrick Ta has a cream bronzer, but this one is among my favorite. It just, it really blends well on the skin and sits beautifully. I'm going back in with a little bit more of the Hourglass Concealer just to bring a little bit more light to my face since I went in heavy handed with the um, Tom Ford Cream Bronzer. And again, I'm just trying to create sort of planes on the face of shade and light that um, will at least attempt to mimic what I see in the photograph. Now once I blended out the concealer, I decided I wanted to go back in and do some actual contouring to create even more dimension and sculpt my face further. And I didn't hold it up to camera, but what I was using was the RCMA um, palette. It, it's the mini one, not the big one that I think would be more appropriate for probably professional makeup artists. But this is a small one, it has five shades. And the formula is nice, but it does require quite a bit of blending because it is, it's thicker, it's, it's dense. However, it does stay put like all day. The stuff does not budge, it does not fade. So it's, it's really great for that. And I'm just going in with the Sonia G uh, sculpting brush to really blend it out. Next up are some Tom Ford products that honestly, I kind of forgot I even had. They went to the back of my drawer. It was when he did these duo sticks and on the one hand was blushes and the other hand was highlights. I had two of them and those are the blushes that you see here, a berry and like a pink. And what I did was I mixed them and combined them on the back of my hand and then uh, applied that, you know, combo shade to my face because I, I thought they looked better together than me using either color alone. These sit nice on the skin. They have a nice creamy formula. Now I'm showing you the highlights. Um, one is like very yellow gold and the other one is a bronze. Um, same formula as the blushes. They blend out well, but they do stay tacky. They do not dry down. So if I were using these on more like a regular basis, they would be a base for powder products because I don't want that tacky feeling on my skin. I would use a little powder blush and highlight on top. And that way you get a nice set look 
and um, better longevity when it comes to the product. But they are they are pretty, and I think they're very forgiving on the skin. And for those people that like cream products, they give a really nice finish. It's a nice subtle glow, nothing too intense, and um, I think pretty. Okay, so next up was mascara, and this was something I purchased from Honest Beauty. Um, I don't own any of their other products, but I thought I'd give it a try, and I got it about, I don't know, a month ago. And I'm shocked because that's the primer side, and I wasn't expecting it to have like this purple color, but it clearly says on the box that that's what it does. I guess I just was not reading it. So anyway, I'm going with this primer first, and I would just say the color actually on the lash, it's there, you can see it, it's very subtle, but it's there, and you know, it made me curious about actually purchasing a mascara in that color. Now I'm going in with the other side, and it has a nice big teddy bear, teddy bear brush for the mascara. Um, it could be a little large if you have smaller eyes. With that said, I do not like this mascara. Actually, I hate it. I I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was just the mascara or just the primer or the combo, but my God, this made my lashes so sticky. It really didn't add much volume or length. It was incredibly frustrating. I ended up going in with a completely different mascara, the Bad Gal Bang Mascara believe it's called just to not only add the volume and length I was looking for but also attempt to unstick my lashes it was uh, I'm I was just so disappointed yeah anyway moving on going to the rare beauty powder this is a beautiful powder I love the packaging it has like a little sifter that actually closes and locks so you could travel with it without too much worry and it looks so nice on the skin I I don't like mattifying really anything because it just does me no favors this does just enough to tap down shine and help set makeup without looking too dry um, now I'm going in with some lip balm, just Mario Badescu lip balm is one of my favorites. I wanted to make sure my lips were properly hydrated before I went in with any lip products. So I wanted to give it a chance to sit on my lips. And in the meantime, it is time to figure out this hair. So I'm just taking down the front section that I curled with the flat iron, taking out all the bobby pins there were so many pins in my head um but i think the curls came out nice and now i'm taking it down that back section that i had just kind of stuck in i can't even call it a bun but stuck in there and at this point i am creating the world's messiest updo all i did was twist up the hair in the back you'll see it a little bit later when i um turn my head around but all I thought to do was just twist it up and just pin it. Pin it to death, use every single bobby pin that I own, like, like a whole pack of them, and just, yeah, pin it up. I guess I could have used a hair clip, but I didn't want to see it. But that's how it looks in the back. And <laughs> I look so crazy. Anyway, I take those last two long pieces and you guessed it, I'm going to pin it some more with the bobby pin and I create it like this little cinnamon roll thing looking on my head. And then after that, I'm going to separate out the curls in the front to try to mimic the style that's in the photograph where it's just sort of you know, messy and undone, kind of sexy, I don't know, where you want to look like you didn't put too much effort in it, but you obviously did. Now I had some long pieces on the side and those I just twisted up to make them a little bit shorter and yeah, more bobby pins, more. I just, head full, I don't know, just kept going. But at the end, I actually liked what I came out with. You just see me 
try and figure this out and trying not to cause too much pain at the top of my head. Actually, the bobby pins weren't that bad. They, once you place them well, you don't even feel them. So here we go with me just, I don't know, fiddling with this hair some more, but starting to see it come together, take shape, liking it. I am. I actually like this look. It would have held better had I used some actual styling product, but like I said before, I just don't like that. Now I'm going in with something from Rare Beauty, and that's me saying hi to my nephew. Um, and it was like one of those cream color sticks that you can use on your face and your lips. I wish I had gotten a darker color, but it's pretty. It's just um, a little bit lighter, a little bit more pink. I wish I had something more berry that kind of matched my nails, but it, it was a nice product. It felt comfortable on the lips, not too heavy. Um, just nice, yeah. Um, next up, you see me in some different clothes. Again, mimicking what's in the photograph. I'll show you the clothes in more detail towards the end of the video, but it's definitely my style. You know, little cami with a nice comfortable cardigan. I can live in an outfit like that. And I'm just touching up the hair again with the Hot Tools flat iron that some of the curls start to fall in the front. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna show you the clothing really quick. The lace cami is from um, Abercrombie and that big oversized cardigan was from Express, both of those things I got a couple years ago. And the jeans, I feel like they're from Nordstrom Rack. And yes, I got on a step stool so you could see the whole outfit. <laughs> Anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Be well. Bye, guys.